Good evening, and thank you so much for joining me for this WNCT Now update. I'm Emily Severage, live in our digital studio, and with the volatile situation going on at the Capitol still, we want to bring you back here down to some local news and show you some of the news that you're missing tonight um, here at our station, around the country, and here as well locally. So we're following breaking news from Washington as protesters are inside the U.S. Capitol, forcing the evacuation of Vice President Pence, House and Senate lawmakers, and congressional workers. The breach of the Capitol security started at around 2 this afternoon, shortly after the House and Senate began debating objections over Electoral College vote certification. At least one person has been shot. The protesters are President Trump's supporters. He riled them up at a midday rally, saying the election had been stolen, vowing he would never concede. He's now calling for his supporters to be peaceful, but he's not condemning their violent acts. What's normally a ceremonial proceeding is now filled with tension inside and turmoil as Trump, loyalists in the House and Senate, are on the streets objecting to the result of the 2020 presidential election. Natalie Brand reports from the Capitol. As protesters swarmed the U.S. Capitol, police put the area on lockdown and lawmakers were escorted from the Senate floor. The chaos and confusion broke out a little more than an hour after Vice President Mike Pence opened a joint session of Congress to count the Electoral College vote, which will officially confirm Joe Biden as the next president of the United States. Tellers will announce the votes. But what is normally a formality has turned tense as a group of Republican lawmakers backing President Trump are raising objections to several battleground states Mr. Biden won, starting with Arizona. I rise up for myself and 60 of my colleagues to object to the uh, counting of the electoral ballots from Arizona. Uh, is the objection in writing and signed by a senator? Yes, it is. It is. Tossing out a state's votes would require a majority from the House and Senate, with Democrats controlling the House and a growing number of senators speaking out against the challenges. The congressional clash will delay the process, but it will not change the outcome of the election. This election were overturned by mere allegations from the losing side, our democracy would enter a death spiral. Vice President Pence's role today is largely ceremonial, but President Trump, who refuses to acknowledge his loss, falsely insists the vice president has the power to intervene. All Vice President Pence has to do is send it back to the states to recertify, and we become president. President Trump renewed his unsubstantiated claims of a rigged election to a large crowd of supporters at a rally outside the White House. All of us here today do not want to see our election victory stolen. Holding signs and waving flags, President Trump supporters vowed to continue to fight. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Capitol Hill. In some local news, Governor Roy Cooper is not announcing any new orders in response to North Carolina's rising COVID-19 numbers, but he is extending his current order for three more weeks. It means restaurants and bars must continue cutting off alcohol sales every night at 9, and the statewide 10 p.m. curfew remains in effect. None on your side's Caroline Boyer joins us live in the studio. Caroline, what are local leaders saying about this extension? Emily, local leaders are not surprised about this. They saw this coming. Trends are heading in the wrong direction, and they're just glad we aren't moving to a full shutdown. Governor Cooper has decided to extend that modified stay-at-home order for the next three weeks. State Health Secretary Mandy Cohen is issuing a new directive urging North Carolinians to stay home except for essential activities and to avoid gatherings, especially indoors with people who you don't live with. Cohen says she doesn't even think we've seen the full effects of holiday travel and gatherings yet. So far, 2021 has seen record numbers of one-day case increases, hospitalizations, and daily percent positives. Greenville Mayor P.J. Connolly says these trends are alarming, but he's glad no businesses will have to shut down. It's hurting really bad right now, uh, but we're all doing our best right now. We're going to continue to support them however we can. Keep your head up. Uh, good things are coming. The vaccine's out there. Governor Cooper says the priority now is getting people vaccinated. He's calling up members of the National Guard to help with distribution and giving out shots. Right now, we don't know how many National Guard members will be coming to the East to help with these efforts. Live in the digital studio, Caroline Boyer, 9 on your side.
Thanks so much, Caroline. Pitt County schools are back in session after the holiday break and students and teachers returned to classes today after the district board voted against a temporary shift to remote learning. None of your sides, Madison Forsey was at the district's headquarters earlier today to hear from people about the return. Madison says everyone agrees kids learn best in the classroom, but many right now are thinking about the risk of spreading the virus in schools or around the community. And they say that possibility outweighs the rewards of in-person learning. I think a lot of teachers right now are feeling like we're not being heard and we're not being protected. Douglas Hacker says teachers are exhausted. If teachers are getting sick and aren't able to come to school, they can't teach. So in order for education to happen, we got to protect our teachers. Hacker and his colleagues were disappointed with the school board's Tuesday decision to continue with in-person learning. He's seen too many teachers out sick with COVID and the nightmare of shifting employees to cover classrooms. Learning really isn't happening in a lot of these classrooms. It's just somebody covering. Not much learning is taking place anyway. He also knows parents have differing opinions. I just wish that uh, there were members on the board that really understood how difficult it is for some parents to be able to uh, have child care at an instant. Diane Taylor believes not enough thought was given to parents and teachers. Then pretend that it's not a crisis when you have those types of numbers was just disheartening. Kylene Dibble with Parents for Public Schools in Pitt County sees more gray area. We're in the middle of a pandemic and being happy with any decision is a really hard place to be um, because there are costs to each decision that, that's made. Pitt County's Health Director Dr. John Silvernail says there are risks either way. Again, we have worked very closely with the school district on sanitization issues, spacing issues, shielding issues, masking issues to try to protect everybody that is in the school. But some teachers are worried those precautions won't be enough. The public education system is primarily to educate. And the best chance we have at educating right now is virtually. Martin County students are also back in the classroom this week, but the district's board is also planning to transition all students back to virtual learning. None on your side's Amber Joseph shares what parents are saying about that decision. One parent tells me she likes virtual learning because of the issue of keeping enough teachers in classrooms due to COVID exposures. And one mom with a full-time job says the short notice is leaving her scrambling to find childcare plans. My kids are doing great with virtual learning. I know that some struggle. Martin County Schools will transition its students to virtual learning. That's due to spiking cases across the county. Christy Godley is a mom to a first grader. She prefers virtual learning and knows COVID isn't easy for schools and their employees. That this face to face thing is being immensely negated by the county not being able to handle the substitute situation. I mean, the schools are struggling. School Superintendent David Fonseca says there was an outbreak at Jamesville and Rogers Elementary Schools. Jamesville, there was what? There was Rogers. There was a teacher and 14 kids that was quarantined here a couple of weeks ago. Are there 24 staff members with COVID? We have 24 staff members that are right now, to our knowledge, are documented to be either with COVID or out due to exposure. I also spoke to Rebecca Zaboski, a mom with a full-time job and four children in school. She tells me the board's decision did not come with much warning and she's scrambling to find child care. Administrators say they'll still distribute pickup meals at each school and will offer laptops and Wi-Fi hotspots to families. All Martin County students will transition to remote learning for two weeks starting January 11th. In Williamson, Amber Joseph, 9 of your side. Well, that's going to wrap up this the WNCT Now update. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and joining us for this update. And stay tuned for some more local stories and national stories coming up on our broadcast at 10 and 11 tonight. Thanks so much for watching.